Hey, what's up you guys? It's Nicholas Lionrider, and welcome back to our Let's Build of the Roger Williams Park Zoo. So, last time we basically finished the entire African area of the park, and off camera I actually uh, went ahead and added the main parking lot. So, uh, now that's all added, and uh, we're ready to enter kind of our phase two of the park. So, we had two options basically. I could have either gone ahead and uh, went up this way, and that would have added stuff like the uh, Faces of the, of the Rainforest exhibit and the barnyard area and stuff. And I felt like that wasn't going to be the best in the interest of, you know, getting episodes out frequently. So instead, we're going to actually go this way and uh, go through this little cut through and work on the North American section of the park. So in this episode, we're going to be working on the American Bison exhibit, which is over here. Shouldn't be a super complicated build. And uh, from there, we're going to just follow the path kind of backwards in the zoo. So that'll be like the pronghorns, wolves, bald eagle, etc. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. Hey, what's up, you guys? So uh, today we are doing the bison exhibit. I am joined today with Dalton as well as Croco. You guys can say hello. Hi. Hi. So, you so yeah, so um, before I actually get around to doing the bison exhibit, I basically went ahead and did the, uh, what's it called, the uh, African Spurred Tortoises first. So right now, you guys can just see me basically doing the pathing system. So Croco and Dalton literally just saw me do this entire build pretty much live, so they, <laughs> they saw me go through this we whole did. process. Um, and so, unfortunately, the majority of the episode isn't super exciting, just because it's um, basically a grass field for the actual bison enclosure. So I tried to include a little bit of the exterior of the exhibit, that, or the habitat, that was a little more interesting to look at, which unfortunately means I had to basically do a lot of custom fences and stuff in the actual <laughs> build, which normally I would cut out, but I threw those in just because... Why not? How much foliage is in this episode? Um, quite a bit, I would say. Like the actual amount of trees and stuff, or just like that I get later on, is kind of crazy. There you can see me going all the way across the map to grab one of the older fences. If it ain't and, broke, don't fix it. Yeah. <laughs> so then I just shortened it or whatever, and then just copied it and pasted it a bunch. Um, so I don't know if I've done. So I finally was actually smart about doing this. I don't know why I didn't do this in the past. Basically, if I just cut off the second log on the end, I could just copy and paste it, and I'm not having to line it up that well. Um, also, so this uh, area over here is also... I created it just because I wanted a bench, <laughs> so that's the whole reason why it's It never worked out. Messy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you guys see it in a minute. Like, I, I try to, like, get a bench working there. I was actually trying to figure out how to get rid of those little mini logs initially eventually i just kind of cover over them but i wish i could get rid of them apparently you can't it's not like the other curved paths or whatever so i was just about to say that yeah and that's just the unfortunate thing but i basically covered it up the best i could um so now i'm just trying to figure out oh yeah i basically had to like sink this in the best i could just because it wasn't working out the best I'm not super happy with how this turned out, personally, but I think it's okay. It has its own charm to it. Yeah, like, I, I tried my best to, like, get this area okay. I've, obviously, I'm using, like, some older fences and stuff, and I'm trying to repurpose as many of the art assets that I made as possible. Uh, I think this yeah. is where I... Oh, yes, I... Uh, Oh, this is where I start the new fence. So, now that we're done with the kind of African area, I'm not using the stick fences or those log fences that I made just now. Um, the North American area, which includes like the pronghorns and bison and stuff, I'll use this kind of like American traditional picket fence type design, where it's just a standard wooden fence, I guess. <laughs> so I basically build that. Um, I just basically, you know, modified I made that same half that I did for the log fences that I can just copy and paste it a bunch in about a minute I think you see me because I it's actually inaccurate right now um, the actual fence has three prongs and I 
basically only made two at the time. So in a second, you see me like just be like, nope, I have to, yep, there you go. I'm like, I have to restart. So luckily I did it before it got too big, because that would have been a real pain. Um, so now I'm just kind of copying that fence a bunch, and like I said, that's unfortunately, uh, I would say a, a large portion of the <laughs> actual video is just me placing down the new fence work and stuff. But luckily it's not super complex. Um, this is another area where I'm trying to add a bench area. So I think in a minute is where you see me actually placing down the bench and it not working out perfectly. And Remember one of those bench alcoves? Yeah, like, I've, I've done them in the past a different way. I would just normally do, like, a single block of uh, path or whatever, just protruding, but it was, like, way too long, so... My new method, I guess, is basically doing these kind of, like, rounded areas. I don't know, I might change it, I might make it something else, but I'm not sure. I kind of wish there was, like, a true null path in the game that, like, has literally nothing there but like they can walk on it like these kind of election yeah like the pseudo null pass that that we have right now with like the logs or the railings or whatever are pretty good but like i want something that's literally just nothing at all i think there actually might be a mod about that i'm not gonna lie i'm pretty so, sure there will be a mod about that at some point yeah uh but basically what, what i'm starting right now are the african spurred tortoise exhibit <laughs> so it's not actually well their exterior summer exhibit so during the winter they actually go inside of the um there's a greenhouse over by the zufari outpost towards the zebra exhibit um and that's where they spend the majority of their time but during the summer they obviously have the exterior and this is over by the giraffes and bison and stuff and it's not a big exhibit but i wanted to at least include it because it's pretty important um i haven't actually made the tortoises yet i'm gonna have to make a mod of probably the i don't know what i, I want your opinion uh guys what, should i do the algebra or the galapagos what uh well are any of those tortoises in the uh, in the zoo in real life no i, I think you and just use the aldabra for the spur tortoise yeah i would agree and maybe for the red foots, maybe the Galapagos. I mean, he could just like take the male tortoise and make one uh, species and use the female to make the other species, like he did with the blue wildebeest. True. Yeah, I could do that. Because I think yeah. that would make the most sense, just because I, I was wondering about that. Because I know I'm going to have to shrink them either way, like I mean, which isn't a, dif a difficult process. That's just modifying their size value. But um, yeah, I was just curious about that. Like if, you know you guys had opinion on which which tortoise was the better one to replace i mean they basically look the same regardless so it's not really like oh yeah super crazy it's just a matter of getting them both because you have two different species in this enclosure mm -hmm. and uh which we I, found out while making this <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah so basically the little rock divider because i know a lot of people uh that i was uh showing this build to when we were doing it live were like saying like that's way too small of an enclosure for that and I'm like, yeah, I know, but it's just, you know, it's just for some tortoises, so it's nothing crazy. Um, and like I said, it's not used for the majority of the year. Like, right now, I mean, before the whole coronavirus thing and stuff, the um, when I went to the zoo, they it was just empty. Like, it had nothing in it or whatever, because the actual tortoises were inside. And their inside enclosure is a lot bigger. Like, they have a whole large area where they keep all the tortoises, all the different species, and they all have, like, I would say, you know, a, oh, here's me placing that bench, finally. So it's a little, uh, the two benches I place are a little bit crooked, but, you know, it's fine. And I'm just adding foliage. But yeah, the tortoises themselves, like, on the inside actually have, like, a lot more space than they do on the outside, so, I don't know. It, it, do you guys think that's like better or worse that they like their temporary holding area has more space than their actual like main enclosure? I mean, they a are a lot more space. Like, I would say like tw it's three times the size of like this exterior. They they're in there for most of the year, right? Uh, yes. Yes. So, if the maybe they took that into consideration, like okay, well the tortoises are gonna be in here for most of the year. We might as well give them a nice enclosure. 
Yeah, well, so that, I was thinking because spur tortoises are grazers, and red foots generally need a lot more cover. Yeah, because that the interior is actually they use it for a few different species. Because um, during the summer, that's where they have a they have a armadillo petting area. They have a nine band, nine banded armadillos, and you can like run and pet them. <laughs> Never heard of that before. I know it's kind of unique. It was it, it's a new thing that they added. I guess in the last year. Are they cured for leprosy? I mean, I, I, I suppose. <laughs> I, like, I don't know. It's like a thing where, you know, they can obviously, if they're not comfortable with the humans and stuff, they can like run off and there's like a dedicated area that they can run to that the people aren't supposed to go to. But um, right. past that, you can just pet them as they like scurry past you. And, you know, right, they're kind of cool. cute. I have, I have a video of like one of them like playing in the water. It's like, I'm, I'm thinking of doing that exhibit at some point. Uh, I might make a dedicated, in the future, just make a dedicated uh, tortoise episode, I guess. And I'll do the interior building then, and w along with the mod and stuff for both the um, red-footed and the, uh, what's the other one? What? African Spurred. I'm drawing a blank African on what I'm talking Disney. about. <laughs> Is but, the Butterfly House the same building where they keep the tortoises? Yeah, so the Butterfly yeah. House was like a temporary thing. Uh, that's the one that you'll see on Google Maps is like what they consider it. But the actual interior, like it, it's, it's been used for a few different things. Uh, they used it for uh, when they were making the new Faces of the Rainforest South America building. Um, that was where they kept the... Basically, the flamingos were kept in tier inside where the tortoises are now, like because there's a little lake, um, a mini lake in that greenhouse, and the flamingos were kept there. They kept the monkeys in there, the porcupine, the sloth, all of them packed into this little little greenhouse or whatever. And uh, yeah, so they've used it for a few different purposes over the years. Um, it's basically just a, a holding area for like any tropical animals because it's just constantly heated um but now what we're actually looking at and i know it's like pause but i'm looking at reference in the actual you know real time um basically the actual american bison exhibit so i'm starting out now i'm looking at a reference for like the actual like colorization and foliage and, and stuff like that so um the bison are another animal, I know I mentioned this in the past with the zebras and wildebeest, they are another animal that's being planned on being phased out soon, unfortunately, which I'm a little upset over because I kind of like bison, but... They're like phasing out half the zoo. Yeah, I know. I don't, like, I don't know how fast the whole phase out process is, and I don't know if it's just because, you know, it, it, basically they're planning on replacing this habitat with moose in the future. And they're going to cut down all the trees and stuff that are in the back and build a fence into the lake so that the moose can have, like, some water and stuff to be with. Swimming. Yeah. Because all, all three of the main animals in the North American Trail are going to be phased out, I guess. So basically the pronghorns are getting phased out in favor of grizzly bears. The bison are getting phased out in favor of moose. And the red wolves aren't really, like... A super surprise it's just they're uh changing them from red wolves to gray wolves just because they do better in the cold which I, i'm fine with that like it's not like crazy to be like oh we're replacing a wolf with a wolf but um and the uh, same thing goes for the pronghorns with grizzly bears i think grizzly bears are a lot cooler than pronghorns but i don't know i don't know what do you guys think? i don't know would you rather have a moose or a bison like i, don't I would prefer the bison more and then, and since you know, like the Rhode Island thing in New England, I guess a moose would make more sense. Yeah. But I grew up in, I grew up with the sense of that the larger the better, and when it comes to zoos, because bison are the largest land mammal in North America, mm -hmm. so therefore more interesting. Yeah, because because again, I like moose, and I know a lot of zoos have bison, and not many have moose, so. Wait, I actually have a question about the moose. Yep. So, do you know what subspecies they are? Because I know that North American moose tend to do pretty poorly in captivity. Probably eastern. 
I have no idea. They, all they have said is it's a moose. <laughs> they haven't probably said, some. And none, none of the and this isn't set in stone. Like we don't know how long this is gonna be planned for. The new master plan doesn't include moose until phase three. Phase two is gonna be adding the uh, new parking lot and sea lions and penguins and stuff. Um, and all the playgrounds too. Uh, yes, all the playgrounds were. No, those are part of phase one. <laughs> oh, I guess so, they're. they're... So yeah, phase yeah. one was the rainforest building and the playgrounds. Phase two is the penguin sea lions, uh, an education building where we're where apparently they apparently already bought it. It's an albino alligator, they bought um, to put in there. So I guess we're getting alligators. Well, a alligator. <laughs> I don't know. I feel. Well, like... didn't they have like Chinese alligators at one point? Yeah, so? they did. They did have uh, Chinese dwarf alligators, kind of recently. They phased them out in favor of. Uh, the North American River Otter, which should also be, I believe, getting moved over near the this whole North American Trail. Because right now they're placed in kind of a weird area. They're next to the Australasia area with like the Binturong and Babarusa and Wallabies and stuff, which is a little weird. Um, so I personally think that, you know, they'd fit better closer to the North American animals. Oh, I do want to comment on this. So I should mention the actual shed I'm making right now. I eventually remove because um, I was estimate. I, if you actually look at like the guest perspective, the guest perspective of the bison exhibit, you don't actually see the enclosure or like the shelter they have. So I was estimating that this is where it is. I was sort of right. It's a little bit further back. I noticed that on Google Earth uh, when I checked that for reference. So I eventually go around and change that. Because um, at first I thought it was uh, the actual stable on Google Earth was a keeper building. But no, that's the actual stables. So um, after I'm done with this foliage, I think I basically get around to doing that. Um, yeah, pretty much right around here is just when he yeah. realizes that it's ever yeah i'm kind of like well this is like kind of like a weird thing because i basically i had to like modify the actual lake shape a little bit to accommodate some of the stuff i was building um i think this is where i kind of realized it. i was like oh look there's a building over here so i originally copied one of the keeper huts that i made a while ago back in uh i forgot how long ago was it episode two or so <laughs> like this was basically there. yeah I, co I copied it literally from like the Watu watusi episode or whatever um and then i found out later that no it's actually the stable area so basically i add that and then uh so that's why i'm adding a staff path right now which is just inaccurate and i also like mess around with the uh, this hill i made was kind of annoying i was getting like kind of funky looking situations like with the actual terrain editor you um, spent so much time on this one gate alone it's unreal yeah i know it's annoying because it's not even where the actual gate should be <laughs> like which is the funny part i think this is where i, I have actually... the hill right around here <laughs> yeah yeah then i mess around with the hill and like the actual shape of the enclosure and stuff i do want to comment on this because like this is an annoying bit so this area back here, um, obviously it's part of where the bison go during like the nighttime and stuff, like because that's where their shelter is. But it's not normally an area that you know the guests see them in, just because they're normally out in the field chilling on the grass and stuff. But with Planet Zoo, I can't limit where the animals go, so they like to be with their shelter constantly. And it's kind of a thing that like I, I haven't really addressed in the past episodes and stuff, but pretty much all of my animals like to hang out in their habitats, even though they shouldn't. So like the Owdads are a great example. They hang out in their shelter all the time, mostly because they have AI of a dull sheep still, so they think it's too hot out, so <laughs> they want to be inside. But um, even though they're literally from North Africa, which is like a Mediterranean climate. Yeah, exactly. But that's just because programmatically they are still dull sheep so <laughs> so yeah. this so I, I could change the um behavior and stuff to make it so that they're you know more accustomed to cold, like warm climate and stuff but i don't know i i just haven't gotten around to it um but now I'm there's actually, a whole lot of editing and coding that he can't really do at the moment 
Yeah, well, I can, can, but it's just a lot of work. I could. It, it'd just needed. be tedious to like go back and like fix some of the mods. Like, I do want to get around and like fix some of the mods. Like, I have to fix up the African Crown Crane at some point, and that's. But ah yes, the crane. Yeah, <laughs> but um, basically, uh, so this is where I actually get around to changing the shelter. So the shelter is now um, a proper, you know, shape and you know functional and that sort of thing so uh nothing crazy about it it's just a terracotta roof with whatever as you can see my bison escape because i you know made the fence too short so i'm basically kind of modifying and rearranging like some of the actual placement of the exhibit i moved the shelter out of the way so that i can like fix the um uh like kind of shape of the habitat and what's you know elevated what's not that sort of thing uh, smooth it out a little bit, change the tech terrain to like sand and that sort of thing. And basically, I'm just trying to like modify the surrounding area to make everything look a okay. So, uh, is there actual, is there actual sand in the exhibit? Uh, yes, from what I can tell, it's kind of hard to know because. It's thing. probably just trampled dirt. Yeah, exactly. Like, a lot of it's grass, but it's obviously dead grass and, like, you know, the grazers that eat any of the plants and stuff. And Is I the... did want to include some of the, like, actual paths that they make from just trampling and stampeding around occasionally. They have, like, kind of a circuit they made around the enclosure. Just, like, at least it's not as bad as literally any pig species. Yeah, where it's just, like, destroying, like, everything because it's like every i actually would like kind of like that if the warthogs actually did like dig little holes and just leave them yeah i kind of did that with the um red river hog exhibit when i built that i made sure to like add some like uh varying hills and stuff in their little enclosure just to kind of imitate those kind of like holes and stuff that like pigs make yeah those behaviors it's the same thing i'll probably do when i get around to the babarusa i'll probably do something kind of similar um right but uh, we're almost done with the actual episode. I'm just kind of touching up a lot of the foliage and stuff and making a few minor tweaks. I grabbed some plants from the rest of the zoo to make sure that like my, my tree choice and palette is all consistent. I'm also dabbing some trees a little bit into the uh, lake and stuff so that we get some of those kind of like water, water coast plants, if that makes any sense. This is everyone's favorite park. The foliage. Yes. Uh, oh, that was the other... Minty's favorite part. This is another thing that I uh, I uh, tried to add was um, back in the zebra episode that I made sure that there was some logs and stuff to around some of the trees so that they don't like you know tear up the bark and stuff. And the bison also have this, so I threw that in there. Um, it, it's just a couple like basically rods of logs <laughs> that are sticking out of the ground. Um, it's basically just like a tree cage. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what it's called, tree cage. Oh, uh, and uh, so for uh, number three fe custom fence, uh, I basically made a small little rope fence. Um, it kind of looks like the one from Zoo Tycoon 2. I was commenting about this uh, off camera. But uh, mm -hmm. it literally looks like the one that was in Zoo Tycoon 2. And um, it's pretty simple. It's literally just a rope object with uh, some climbing frames and then... I just copy that ab around a bunch, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's <laughs> nothing super sophisticated. It's just along the the path uh, to toward the Alan Sean Feinstein Jr. Scala Wetlands Trail. Um, also, the reason I love much. how you say that. Oh, it's well, it's just, I I could go into a whole thing on Alan Sean Feinstein in another episode, but uh. <laughs> Basically. What is he part of a conspiracy or something? He's he... a he's a he's a wealthy man in Rhode Island, and he basically did... pays for half the state. Um, did he did he bring the cult of Dunkin' Donuts to Rhode Island? It's very possible, but uh, that's pretty much it. So um, right now, uh, you guys can see the uh, American bison, uh, you know, walking around in their enclosure. But uh, stay tuned next time because we're going to be actually going over the pronghorn exhibit. So. Uh, Stay tuned, and uh, I'll see you guys. Thank you.